and welcome to Class Time, your daily classroom for CSEC students. Watch this lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. Today's mathematics lesson will be focusing on volume of solids, in particular prisms. I am Latoya Sharia. And I am Karima Mundell Thomas. So let's get into the lesson, Latoya. Indeed. As you said, we're looking at volume today and in particular, volume of prisms. Now, since we're going to be talking about volume, mm -hmm. it's important that we define or, you know, talk a little bit about what volume is. Agreed. So I'm going to throw that question to you. All right. Before we even talk about volume, I have this, I don't know if it's an issue, but I've often heard persons using the words volume and capacity interchangeably. Mm. And I want to be clear today. What's the difference or is there a difference between volume and capacity? Important question. Yeah. All right. So when we talk about volume, we're talking about the amount of space taken up by a substance or a solid object. But when we talk about capacity, we're talking about the measure of an object's ability to hold a substance like solid, liquid or gas. Okay, so um, I'm thinking, based on what you said about capacity being the measure of an object's ability to hold a substance, mm -hmm. that is sounding to me like there's a hollow section maybe mm -hmm. in, in this particular solid and right. you're seeing how much solid, liquid or, or gas yes. can hold in it. Right. So we said that's the capacity of the container maybe? Definitely. So, example. You, so you can probably think of what we Jamaicans call a shed pan. So the size of your shed pan, oh my goodness. Will det the capacity of your shed pan will determine the amount of lunch you can take. Okay? <laughs> you had to go there. All right. So volume and capacity, though, can be equal. And they are actually equal when the object or the container is full. Ah, makes sense. Because sometimes we said the thing full to capacity. Full to the brim. To the brim. Yeah. All right. All right. We're also talking about prisms. We are. So hmm, I don't know really if our students, if they are so familiar with the term prism, so right. we want to also talk about what is a prism and how we go about identifying prisms. All right, no problem. So when we talk about prisms, we're talking about a solid object with a uniformed cross-section. Hmm. And when we talk about uniform, we're not talking about... You and I's shirt <laughs> or a school but, outfit. But but um, when we talk about uniform that our students wear, it's really talking about the fact that the design is the same. And so we can talk about uniform to be referring to sameness. Identical. Yes. So when we talk about the object having a uniformed cross-section, and we're going to touch on the cross-section in a minute mm -hmm. when we look at our demonstration, but the uniformity of it is that as you cut along the length of the prism or the height, depending on the orientation, and we'll talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that in a little while, you're getting that same shape, right. identical. Mathematically, we say it's congruent. Right. All right? So that's what we mean when we talk about uniformed cross-section. Now, as we said earlier, the cross-section is the same along its length or height, depending on its orientation. And the shape of the cross-section actually gives the prism its name. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on screen, we have what we call a triangular prism. Right. And as we look at the diagram, we're seeing that triangular shape. You see in that triangle there? I we, am. That's our cross section and we're noticing that if we were to cut right in the middle there where the word cross section is, we're going to actually see the triangle identical to the one that we had right at the front there. I hope you're getting what I I'm am, saying. I am and not just in the middle. If I were to cut along any part ah. of the, what well, I'm seeing looking like a slice of cheese there, <laughs> but not necessarily, that triangular prism, if I were to cut right behind the front face or to cut near to the back, I should get the same identical triangular face. 
Okay, so that's what we talk about, uniformed right, coming out right, again. Right. All right, so let's talk a little bit more. So the faces of the prisms are all polygons. And what are polygons again? Well, when I was going to school, they said it was <laughs> a many-sided, closed shape. All right. Cycle. Yes. <laughs> okay, but I want to zoom in also on the word faces. All right, so if we were to look at... Uh, we were to look at some of these um, prisms that we have on set. When we talk about the faces, so this one is an open uh, prism, so right. one of the faces is missing here, but we're talking about these uh, uh, flat surfaces here. That's what we're referring to when we talk about the faces. So the faces of the prisms, they are all polygons. Right, and we can see that those are all rectangles. In this case, yes. yes. All right. So for the, for the triangular prism, we would actually have two faces that are triangular. Or triangular right. And um, three faces that are rectangular. Right. Cool. So here on screen, we're having some examples of prisms. So you All want right. to talk about these? Yes. So earlier we talked about the polygons, and we said, I, I would have said what I learned. <laughs> In, in school about a many-sided, whatever. But right. we want to emphasize that the polygons actually have straight edges or straight sides. And if we look on, you know, another prism here, we can see that all the, the sides of the faces, and by virtue they now become edges, edges. Mm -hmm. are indeed straight. All right, right, so we can see the polygon idea coming out when we look at those right, faces. Right, right, right. Beautiful. So as we look at these prisms, uh, we're seeing the uniformed cross-section coming out. So when we look at this trapezoidal prism, prism. Mm -hmm. we're seeing that um, trapezium, if we were to cut along the length of this prism, yes. we're seeing the same trapezoidal shape, you know, coming, coming out. out. So we see that blue one, we see that red one, that pink one, and we're seeing that they're all identical. So I know that this is a prism. Right. But I'm looking at the second image, Karima, mm -hmm. and I am seeing where this rectangular prism seemed to have more than one cross-section. Is that so? Well, guess what? The cuboid, and that's what this one is called, it's, right. it's quite special because if we look at the first image, we notice that if we actually cut horizontally, yes, and anywhere along that, that um, face there, if we cut horizontally, we're getting an identical polygon coming out there as well. Right. But we also notice if we go back to the diagram that if we are to cut vertically, there is also a face here that we're seeing uniformed right throughout um, this prism. Especially And indeed. so, yes, this rectangular prism, a.k.a. the cuboid, cuboid. is a very special prism. Okay. So too is the cube, which is right beside it. And we know that the cube, all the faces are squares. Yes. yes. And so by virtue of this, we could actually cut either horizontally or we could also cut vertically. vertically. All right. All right. So I'm seeing two, and, and we can see the same thing coming through with the triangular prism and the pentagonal, pentagonal. prism. <laughs> yes. All right. But hmm, what about this? Is this a prism? Hmm. Question sign indeed. <laughs> and you know, um, there's this debate going on. But if I should actually think about how we defined prism earlier, uh -huh. then I would say that this cylinder is not categorized or classified as a prism because of that curved surface that it has there. Right, so the polygon idea won't be coming out where the faces are concerned. But I'm seeing if I'm supposed to cut it horizontally, uh -huh. I'm, I will be getting a uniform cross-section there. Well, that is true. And so that is why we are going to be including the cylinder in this lesson. Right. Because when we talk about volume and as we are going into some of the calculations, we're going to find that it operates on the same principle 
as the prism. So I think we can call it a prism cousin. I could count on you for something like a that. Prism, so. okay. All right. All right. Special <laughs> prism, if you don't want to say prism cousin. All right. All right. So the question is then, how do we determine the volume of a prism and a cylinder by virtue? How do we do that? Very good question, and I'm sure our students want to know too. So, all right, so we're going to do some demonstration this all morning. All right, take it away. Right, and I'm going to use. I have some. If you look, they're called tiles, but if you look closely, let me just turn it there. It actually has some depth, some height which means that this is no longer a square, but it's now a solid. The mere fact that I can hold it, right? right? The mere fact that I can hold it, it is now a solid. And we can call this a cuboid. It is indeed a cuboid, right? Rectangular yes. faces, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stack, I'm going to use my tape to ensure that I hold it in place. And I'm going to stack Oopsie, all of these are same size. Trust me when I tell you that they're all same size, all the same. So I'm going to stack them in a horizontal way. And I'm, not, I'm going to use this stacking to now create a new solid. So we're going to pretend as if when I stack it, they're all going to become one, so to speak. And if it's a little outer line, don't judge me. All right, so we're noticing that uh, this uh, that you're doing, Latoya, it's now starting to resemble, well, it was, as we said earlier, the, the original pieces were actually cuboids, but we're seeing a, a new cuboid being formed here. Right. All right, I think we can work with that. Good, so it's now looking like some of those prisms that we looked at on the diagram. Right. All right, so talk to us about how this relates to calculating the volume. So we said originally that the volume, how we say we define the volume of an object again? Well, we talked about the amount of space that the object occupies. All right. So we're seeing that this, no, this cuboid that I would have created is now occupying this space right here. So, and right? it's three-dimensional. And it is three-dimensional. There you go. So I'm, I now need to figure out how can I find the volume of this space that is being occupied. Now, if I look at one of the smaller tiles or the smaller cuboid that I would have used to create this stacking, I'm seeing that I stacked a particular surface area going one way or a particular surface going in one direction. All right, so that's starting to sound like you're talking about a cross section. Right, here, so. so you can see that there's a uniform, uniformed cross section going straight across. And if I were to turn it this way, then it would be going upward, right? So I'm saying to myself then, okay, maybe... I can use the area of one of these tiles and that the face or the face mm -hmm. for now the, the, the cuboid that I created here. And I'm looking at how many of the tiles then did I stack to All get right. a height or a length in this case All based right. on the orientation. Okay. So, so I'm seeing that I have a particular area and that same area is going across to a new length. Okay, I see what you're saying. So we're talking about the cross section right. there. So we would have talked about cross section earlier. Right. And so you're saying to me that you could find the area of that cross section that you're yes. seeing going throughout the shape, pretty much the uniformed cross section that right. we talk about. So based on what you're saying, I would need to know the length of that cuboid that you just created. Yes. And once I know that length, um, what, what am I to do with that now? So I said, how many of the, the tiles did I stack? 
But remember that, that each tile would actually have its own height. Because as I said, it's now a solid. So when I hold it, okay, I can hold it in my hand. So it actually has an as a height. So say, for example, the height was one millimeter. Millimeter, yes. Right? So the height was one millimeter. The vert by virtue of me having one... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I now have fourteen of the smaller cuboids stacked. And if I'm saying the height is one millimeter, it means then that the height of this cuboid, cuboid that I created would now be fourteen millimeters. Mm, okay. Right? Yes. And so then and, and remember that each of the smaller cuboid would have its own area. So for me to find the volume or the space that this object is now taking up, I'm looking at that area going up 14 millimeters. Ah. So it's the same area going upward to a 14 millimeter height. Right. Interesting. See what I'm saying yes. there? Yes, and I'm thinking, Latoya, as you're talking about that, a similar idea is coming out, right. even with these $20 um, coins that I have here. Mm -hmm. Only that in this case, the, 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 the cross section that we will be talking about is now circular. in the shape of a circle. So right. it's circular. And so with the same stacking idea, if I stack very many of these $20 um, coins, I'm actually getting a cylinder forming here right. similar to what you would have you have a cuboid and mine is stacked to actually form a, a cylinder. cylinder and the, the idea is the same so you're having a same area stacking to a particular height okay right beautiful and earlier we talked about orientation and you mentioned it as well right. that if my cylinder is lying this way then we talk about the length of, 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 of the cylinder, right. the length of the prism. Right. So go ahead now and finish telling us, because we can put these together now, how we actually now calculate the volume. So we talk about the uniform cross-section. We talk about that sameness going up to a particular height. How or does, length, <laughs> or depending length. on its orientation. Right. How does that help us with calculating the volume of these prism. prisms and so cylinders. So this is particular to prism, and we say prisms have a uniform cross-section. That's right. So as long as the solid is a prism and it has a uniform cross-section, then we can simply multiply the area of that cross-section by its perpendicular height or length, depending on its orientation. So it might be the height or the length, depending on its orientation. Okay, so and I want to point out the word perpendicular is very, very important right. because this height that we're talking about must actually form a right angle with that face that we have identified to be the cross section. Right. Good. So it is, in this case, if I were to turn my stacking in that orientation, it would be perpendicular to the table. All right. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. And then if I turn it this way, then we'll have a length there. Okay. But that length is still perpendicular to the face that we have identified right. to be the cross section. Right. Or that shape. So right. going back to our cuboid or rectangular prism. Yes. With a special name. If we are finding the value, the volume <laughs> rather, we f first we find the area of the cross section. And in this case, the cross section is a rectangle. All right, so we, we, we are using the yellow face here because remember right. we talked about the rectangular prism being very special. Right. So we're identifying our cross-section to be the yellow-shaded um, part of the right. prism. And so to find the area of that, we're multiplying its length by its width. So we're multiplying length by width. And as you rightly said, to complete the calculation for its volume, we now need to multiply that result by the perpendicular height, which is labeled with the letter H there. Fabulous. And the, it, the, the sentiments are the same for the cube, because we know that the cube is a special rectangular prism as well. Right. So it's the same. Now, what makes it special, um, as we would have identified earlier, the three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height, perpendicular height, they are all the same value. Because right. we talked about the faces being squares. Right. And so 
when we're calculating our volume, we may actually say length multiplied by length multiplied by length. And we know from indices that if we're multiplying the same number or the number of times that we write a number as a factor, we can actually use indices to write that. And so the volume of a cube can be found by cubing its length, all right? <laughs> yes. Or length cubed, yes. all right? Yes. Yes. All right. So what about the triangular prism now? Similar idea, similar right. idea. So we're looking at here at the cross section being a triangle. And if, if we can recall, the, to find the area of a triangle, we need to know its base. Well, one of the ways we can right. use base multiplied by its perpendicular height. And in this case, we're talking about the perpendicular height of the triangle. And right. of course, we multiply that by the height of the prism. I think we're going to come back from a break and pick yeah. up right here. Um, with this particular prism. So we'll be back with more mathematics. Simple. Welcome back to Class Time, your daily classroom for CSEC subjects. If you're just joining us, we are looking at volume of solids, in particular, the prisms. Now, this is where we left off before the break, Latoya. We were talking about how to determine the volume of a prism, and we would have discovered that we can multiply the, find the area, sorry, of the cross section, right. and multiply it by its perpendicular height, or, or length, length. De depending on its orientation right and this is bringing that out as well so we talked about the triangular prism and the fact that the cross section is in the shape of a triangle and so to find its area of its of the triangle it's half base multiplied by its perpendicular perpendicular height and note that this height is the height of the triangle, triangle. good right. And then now to find the volume 
of this prism, mm -hmm. we're going to have to multiply that result by the perpendicular height. And that's the of height the of prism. the prism. Beautiful. Right. And we also talked about the orientation being important yes. because sometimes, depending on how the prism is um, placed, we may actually refer to that as the length, right. which is why we have perpendicular height or length of so the So if prism. we have a vertical orientation, we're talking about its height, All while right. if we have a horizontal orientation, we're talking about its length. Beautiful. So now we are moving on to the prism's cousin, cylinder, <laughs> from down the road <laughs> all right so we did say earlier that it operates on the same principle right so we notice here that the cross section is actually circular right and so we know how to find the area of a circle easy peasy easy peasy pi multiplied by r square right. right and once we have calculated that area of the cross section we now need to multiply that result by the perpendicular height. Remember, this is the height of the prism. Or, and we talked about the orientation earlier. Right. So we may actually speak of the perpendicular height as the length, depending on the orientation of the prism. So, All right. Whew. I think we need to put that information to use. That's right. All right. So here is a question. So the diagram below, not drawn to scale, of course shows a triangular prism, A, B, C, D, E, F. The cross-section is the right-angled triangle, A, B, C, where A, B is 6 centimeters and A, C is 8 centimeters. All right. So first, we're given two lengths um, the, the, on the triangle here. Yes. And the first thing we need to do is to calculate the area of triangle A, B, C. Interesting, because we just talked about area of triangle earlier right. when, we, when we came in from the break. And, and then, there's a second part. Okay. Yes, we then need to find the length of the prism if its volume is 540 cubic centimeters. Hmm. All right, so let's tackle them one at a time. All right. So let's talk about the area of triangle ABC. Now, as was said in the wording, it's a right-angled triangle. Yes. And I'm also seeing that coming out on the diagram. So I know that its base here, based on its orientation, the base of the triangle is 6 centimeters. And the length of the height there is 8 centimeters. Right. And so we're pretty much substitute those values. Good. And once we calculate correctly, our area here would be 24 square centimeters. Indeed. The second question asks us to find the length of the prism if its volume is 500 cubic centimeters. 540. 540. <laughs> Glasses problem. Okay. Cubic centimeters. All right. So in this case, so I see they have flipped it on us. They're, right. they're not asking us to calculate the volume. Right. They're actually giving us the volume and yes. asking us to calculate the length of this prism. Now, if we remember correctly, as we did in our demonstration, we found that the volume is equal to the area of the cross section mm -hmm. multiplied by its perpendicular height or length. Right, and in this case, we have a length. Length, so we can right. use that up, not true? Yes, we can. Yeah, man, so let's use that up. So here we, we're substituting what we just said. So where volume of prism is, we already know that's 540 cubic centimeters. Mm -hmm. The area of the cross section, which, which we is a just triangle, calculated. we just calculated to be 24 square centimeters. Yes. And perpendicular length is what we're finding. Yes, indeed. So we pretty much need to make, make L, the L the subject. subject of the equation. Cool. And to do that, we're basically dividing both sides, let me point that out, both sides are being divided by 24 square centimeters. And so we have a length of 22 and a half or 22.5 right. centimeters. And I just want to point out that the length of the triangular prism is measured in centimeters. So you notice right. that we would have started with cubic centimeters. Because we, we talked about area. volume. Mm -hmm. We talk about the area which is square centimeters and now we're just being asked 
to find the length, which is a one-dimensional uh, measure, right? Mm -hmm. And that's centimeters. Cool. Just pointing that out. Very important point. Students right. mess that up all the time. But let's do a CSEC question. Mm -hmm. And this question was taken from the May 2015 paper. So the diagram below, not drawn to scale, shows two cylindrical water tanks, A and B. Tank A has base diameter 8 meters and height 5 meters. Both tanks are filled with water. Take pi as 3 and 14 hundredths or 3.14. And we are to find the volume of tank B. The volume, volume of, of water. water. Sorry, of tank B. All right. So right. interesting that they asked us for the volume of water in tank B because mm -hmm. we need to... Um, recall that in the statement, they told us that these tanks are full. Yes. So uh, we know that water takes the shape of whatever container we pour it in, right? Yes. So then if we're finding the volume of water in tank B, we could actually just find... The capacity of tank B. The capacity of tank <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because yes. it's full to capacity. It eh? is. All right. So let's see how we can do that. So we... Okay, so we first we need to identify what shape. All right, so the solid here or the pris well, mm, mm -hmm. let me take that back. The solid here yes. is a cylinder, yes. <laughs> right? And so we know that the cross section is, uh, is circular, yes. yes? And we also have the height, because we're looking at tank B, height of five meters. But I want to zoom in, Latoya, because when we looked at the question, it gave us that eight meters as the diameter and according to <laughs> or deriving earlier we find the volume of a cylinder by using its radius right because when we talk about area of circle mm -hmm. it's actually pi multiplied by r squared radius and squared. so Vol we have to be very careful mm -hmm. students make this error all the time they are given the diameter and they use it as the radius so you're saying it's not pi 8 squared? No, darling dear. We need to find the radius. Remember that the radius is half or the length of that radius is half the length of the diameter. True. Yep. So radius in this case would have to be 4, four. meters. And right. so we have our formula. We are just substituting our val values. I'm just, I would just like to point out also that when you get a question, you want to use the value of pi that was given. Because we know we have two values of pi that we use, 3.14 or 22 sevenths. Technically the same value, but represented right. differently. One is rounded right. somewhat. So you want to stick to the value that was given. Given in right? the question, definitely. And also remember that r is squared. Yes. And so that four meters, we must have four meters multiplied by four meters. Right. All right, just pointing that out. And then when you would have multiplied all these numbers, you should get 251.2 cubic meters. Now, Karim, I have a very important question. I'm seeing where we have cubic meters here. Mm -hmm. But I also, so is it a case where I multiplied the three M's together? No, 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 no. That's a common error too. Good thing you point that out. Because when we talk about um, cube, even as we look at our table, the mm -hmm. cube is actually the unit that we use, right, when we're when we going to be measuring volume. All right? So mm -hmm. it's not an algebraic principle that we're using here. Oh. But we know that when we talk about volume, we're talking about a three-dimensional measure, and right. so we're actually talking about cubic meters or cubic units, to uh, be general. Okay, okay, right. okay. So we're not actually multiplying the units together. Got you. All right. All right, so the second question asks, to if the area of the base of tank A is 314 squared meters, square meters, calculate the length of the radius of tank A. Once again, remember they said to take pi as 3.14. So let's backtrack, let's look at what we've been given in this question. All right. So we're told, we're given a new piece of information yes. that the area of the base 
of tank A mm -hmm. is actually 314 square meters. Which also means that's the area of the cross section. Cool. And we know that the cross section is in the shape of a circle. So it's circular. Cool. And we also know how we find the area of a circle. Yes, we do. So I think we have enough information to tackle this question. Right. All right, so let's talk about the solution. So we have been given the area of the base of tank A, which we said is 314 square meters. And we know that this would have been the result of multiplying pi with r squared, right? So right. pi r squared. So we know pi to be 3.14. So let's substitute so that. So we substitute there. Now we're asked to calculate the length of the radius. So we need r, not true? Yes, we do. Hmm. So we need to divide both sides by 3.14, mm -hmm. which now tells us that r squared is actually 100, 100 square meters. So we found r. And we know that it's square meters, uh, yeah, because we're, we're looking at area concepts right here so right? That means, so r then the length of r is 100 square meter you see that on the screen i'm so, sure you see so we found r, r square did they ask us for r square look back at the question for me oh, please oh so then, that means that i can't leave it right here then no, oh okay okay, oh, okay okay so we need remember now we need r as a subject not r square ah uh, got you so let's talk about what we need to do to get r okay. to be the subject. And here r was squared. Sounds like we need a square root. Yes, yeah. I agree. So let's square root both sides. All right, so the length of the radius here is 10 meters. And we know that the square root of 100 is... 10. But, but, what, but the square root of 100 is positive or negative 10. So how comes it only have 10? Do you have a negative length, miss? Let me see you... Measure negative. something and get a negative yes. result. Yes. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, fine. I was just right. toying with you. So length is only positive, positive values. But, okay, so based on this situation, yes. then we have to take the positive um, yes. value. So we do know that the square root of 100 is in fact positive or negative. negative 10. But for this case, we're taking the positive if value. If we're doing numbers or algebra, but this is measurement. All right, sweetheart, okay, All right. It. Okay, so the other part of the question now is asking, or is saying, tank A holds eight times as much water as tank B, and we need to calculate the height of tank A. All right, so we need to talk about what we've been given, yes? Tank A holds eight times as much water as tank B. Mm -hmm. Now, we would have already found the capacity for tank B earlier, yes, we which did. was 251.2 uh, cubic meters. Yes. So if tank A holds eight times that amount based on the question, then the capacity for tank A must be... 251.2 multiplied by 8, eight right. which gives us 2,009.6 cubic meters. All right, so we found the capacity of tank A. We finish? No. It, oh, it actually tells us to calculate the, the height. height. Right. All right, so how can we use the capacity information to help us? Well, remember, I th and I think we touched on a similar question to this earlier. Mm -hmm. We talked about the capacity being found using the area of the cross-section, right. multiplying that by the height of the prism. Okay. So we did have before, because we're talking about tank A. Yes. So if we remember in part two of the question. It did tell us. It did tell us that the area of the base of tank A is actually 314. Okay. So we know that this area, 314, mm -hmm. must have been multiplied by some value. Right. A which height. would represent the height. Mm -hmm. And the result of that multiplication would have given 2009 0.6 cubic meters yeah <laughs> cubic meters all right so okay. we can use that yes we yeah can. let's let's see what's happening here 
So we know that to find the capacity of the tank, which is a cylinder, right? It's um, we multiply pi by r square, and of course we multiply that result by the height, which is its area multiplied by its perpendicular height. Right. So the area of the cross section, formula. right, multiplied by perpendicular height, and we know that that result was actually two thousand nine point six cubic meters. All right. We know the but value of. We know the value of pi r square. Oh, that yes, section. Yes, yes. We know area. the entire area. Yes, we do. We do because we were given that. So we could actually remove that pi r um, square and actually replace it with the value we've been given, yes. which is 314 uh, square meters. And we're looking for the heights. So right. So we want h to be the subject. So we can divide both sides by 314 making it a subject of the formula. That's right. And so height is a whopping 6.4 meters. Nice. <laughs> cool, isn't it? Cool. <laughs> All right. So, huh. you know, I'm, I'm happy for these questions because mm -hmm. uh, they help us to show to the students, you know, the various ways that questions can be asked of them where they have to use the volume which may sometimes be given right. to actually calculate another dimension right. or a dimension of the, the, the prism. But what is most important for me about this question in particular, Karima, is that we ha the students must pay attention to the information that's given. So you might probably, if, if you just read question three by itself, you're saying, but they don't give us no height how am I, and no era, so how am I going to find the volume of or the capacity of tank A when a part of the information was in another part of the question? Mm. So you want to read through your questions carefully, right, before you start working the questions. All right, so I know we're coming up on a break, but I want to leave the students with this question mm -hmm. for them to, you know, look at it. See how best I can handle it. Go and try. Go and try. Put yeah. your answer on YouTube if you have the answer or hashtag TVJ class time or on Instagram. Yes. Or Facebook. All the social media peeps. Yes. So, so, all right. We're so, going look at the question. It's talking about Fresh Farms Dairy mm -hmm. and this, they sell milk mm -hmm. in these cartons. And, of course, we're given the internal dimensions of this carton. All right, so we have six centimeters, we have four centimeters, and we have, of course, the height there of 10 centimeters. You're asked to calculate the volume of milk in, in each. each carton. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're told to give this answer in cubic centimeters. And of course, ice cream coming up. Love that. Yes. So we're going to take a break. We're going to actually take our final break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up this question and take you out. <laughs>
Welcome back. If you are just join, joining us, hello, hi. We've been looking at finding the volume of prisms and we've been going through some CSEC questions. And we have another here. If you were here before, you should have been trying. So let's see if whatever you did is correct. Okay? All cool. right. All right. So just in case you are just joining us, we're talking about Fresh Farms Dairy and the fact that they sell milk in cartons that are in the shape of a cuboid with internal dimensions of 6 centimeters by 4 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And we're being asked to calculate in cubic centimeters the volume of milk in each carton. Now, of course, we're saying the carton full to the capacity. Brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the volume of milk. So let's talk about that. And then we will talk about the recipe and the ice cream coming up. I hope you have ice cream for Okay. Me so calculate, as it said, in cubic centimeters, the volume of milk in each carton. Now, milk operates like... Water, not sure it's liquid. It does. And so it would have taken the shape of the container. The container, in, in this case, case, the carton. Yes. <laughs> All right. So pretty much once we find the capacity um, of the, the carton here, mm -hmm. then we pretty much have the volume, the volume of, of the milk. milk. Cool. Indeed. So this being a cuboid, we know that to calculate the volume, we would be using length multiplied by width multiplied by the height of the carton. All right, so we're pretty much substituting those values here. So, but, let's but we remember in earlier we were talking and we said that the rectangular prism in this case a cuboid, very special, mm -hmm. and we have to pay keen attention when we are identifying the dimensions. So, what will be the length? What will be the width? And what will be the perpendicular height in this case? All right, so based on how um, the prism, the orientation, right. um, I'm thinking we could take 10 centimeters as the height of the prism. Right. And so we're going to be taking our length and width um, to be six and four using those dimensions that are at the base of okay. the, of the, the, no the prism there. No problem. All right, so we have six centimeters multiplied by four centimeters multiplied by 10 centimeters. And that's a pretty easy multiplication. So we have 240 cubic centimeters. I remember we talk about volume, three-dimensional um, measure, yes. talking about cubic units, yes? yes. Ah, my favorite part. Ice so a recipe for making ice cream requires three liters of milk. Okay. How many cartons of milk should be bought to make the ice cream. Liters hmm. of milk. So wait, we were talking about centimeters and cubic centimeters. How we reach a liters? Just about to ask that. But then there must be a way that we can convert. Wait, liters. Some, yeah, man. Something seems like it coming back. A, yeah, a man. We, we learned something Latoya in um, class that one uh, liter is so, actually so one equivalent to 1,000 cubic, cubic centimeters. centimeters. Yes, 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 that's it, that's it. See, that's why you must listen when teacher teach. There you go. So mm -hmm. we have to pay keen attention to this piece of information mm -hmm. because if we looked at the, the volume of milk in the carton, we calculated that in cubic centimeters and now we're being told about milk in liters. So I think it's best we convert this three liters of milk to cubic centimeters. So I would just want to tell our students that this is one particular piece of information you want to store somewhere in the back of your brain that one liter is always equal. Yeah, in the back of your brain where you can retrieve it. To a thousand cubic centimeters. Should in case you get a question asking you to convert from centime cubic centimeters to liters. So remember, one liter is equivalent to one thousand Cubic, cubic centimeters. centimeters. Don't there forget enough. Right. So let's talk about the three liters then. All right. So if one liter is equivalent to 1,000 cubic centimeters, then three liters mm. would be equivalent to 3,000. 3, yes. <laughs> Right, so we're multiplying by three here. So 3,000 cubic centimeters. So that's the amount of milk 
All right. That is required for the ice cream. Okay. So. so let's talk about how many cartons now, because guess what? We know that we need 3,000 cubic centimeters mm -hmm. of milk. Yes. And each carton holds, how much again? 240 yes. cubic centimeters. So I think I need to divide, I need to find out how many cartons. So the amount of milk required, I need to see how many 240 can come out of that. Don't right, right. Yeah. So I need to divide. So I'm dividing my 3,000 cubic centimeters by 240 cubic centimeters. Right. So let's see, because I want this recipe, you know. So I'm getting 12.5 here, but... 12 and a half. Them sell half a carton of milk? Well, it depends on where you live. Like, seriously. So <laughs> let's answer this question. <laughs> How many cartons of milk should be bought? All right, so you're so going to have to buy 13. No arguments, Latoya. You're going to oh. have to buy okay. 13 because we cannot get in our supermarkets half I could have asked carton. my next door neighbor for half. Okay. But that's not it's, what it questions. It's by your buying. All right. All right. No so problem. 12 cartons of milk okay. should be bought. So remember, students, look carefully at the question that is asked of you. Definitely. Yes. They asked us how many cartons should be bought. Pay attention. Don't leave your answers. 12.5, you must buy 30. Because the shop not going to, well, the super, let's assume the supermarket <laughs> not going to give you a half a box. I mean. All right. So let's wrap this up with a quick summary, right, right, of what we would have looked at today. So we mentioned in our lesson that volume is the amount of space, right, taken yes. up by a substance or solid object yes that's important and the capacity refers to how much that container or object can hold ah and then we went ahead and we said well the volume and the capacity will be equal when if or when the mm -hmm. object or container is filled to capacity yes man all, all that right. it can hold is and in so. there <laughs> <laughs> all right and then we talk about the volume of prisms or cylinder, because remember, cylinder is prism cousin from Ronso. According Ronso. to Latoya Shariah. Right, you're going to find the area of the cross-section and multiply that by the prism or cylinder's perpendicular height or length. Wow, And time remember, finish. hold on, time finished, but remember, when we talk about the cross-section, we're looking at uniformed cross-section. Definitely. So we definitely have to check on that to ensure that it's a prism definitely. that we're dealing with. Cool. Definitely. Love that. All right. Unfortunately, that's all for today's oh class. My. Class time resumes tomorrow at 9 a.m. Until, Until then, then, keep safe. Wash your hands. Sanitize. Wear, Wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs>